Hello everyone and welcome to Scoresight. Let's see how to set it up. In your Scoresight application, go on top and choose a camera or a video file. I'm going to choose one of the video files I have pre-recorded of a scoreboard. Once it loads up, you can use the four corner correction button here on the top right to correct the perspective in your view. I'm going to click this and then click four corners of my scoreboard area. To get started with reading elements I have on my scoreboard, I'm going to select one of the elements on the left, like the timer, and click add to scene. That will bring up the timer box here that I can drag over to my timer area in the scoreboard. I'm going to adjust it so that it covers the whole timer and I get a marking here for each of the characters that you can see. Make sure to only grab the area that you need and not extra parts. To make sure that you're zeroed in on the characters, you can use the binary view. Make sure that your positioning is right over the area that you need without extra pixels that may come in from above, below, or the sides. Make sure to leave room on the left for extra characters that might appear when the timer will go above 10. Once I'm happy with my positioning, I can go ahead and change some of the options here on the left. Average smoothing will try to smooth out the readings as they change in case of any glitches. We can turn this off mostly for timers that update very fast. Skip empty values will not output to your broadcasting software in case that an empty reading is detected. Auto crop will attempt to crop to just the part of the timer. You can see here that with auto crop on, my timer has a green box that zeroes in on just the area of the timer. So we can leave this on or turn this off. Skip similar image will skip images that are very similar. In this case, we would see the yellow SIM symbol next to our timer saying that there's no reason to reread this image because it hasn't changed and that will save on CPU cycles. For fast moving things like a timer, I would turn this off. Remove leading zeros. In case your timer has a leading zero, like zero 07, remove leading zero will remove it in the output. Rescale will change the internal scaling of this to a smaller scale, which would be more CPU friendly and also have a higher accuracy in reading in some cases. Inverting the output might also be beneficial in case you're reading black on white instead of white on black. The ordinal indicator is used mostly for periods. I'm going to add my period in here and the ordinal indicator will add the first, second, third, and fourth suffix if you need it in your reading. Cleanup will help clean up some of the possible noise in the image. Dilate will make will make the characters more bolded in case like in this reading i'm going to add my score in the case of this reading if i'm not using dilate it has some noisy parts if i use dilate that's going to bold that and connect everything together confidence threshold will let the ocr system accept or reject based on how confident it is that the reading is correct one more setting to try is a different OCR model. For most scoreboards, the general scoreboard setting will probably work best. This is how you would set your scoreboard with ScoreSight. Let me go ahead and add all of the other fields. One final setting to use is the format. The format allows you to accept or reject different readings you get from the OCR system. In this case, I have two digits, then a colon, then another two digits, or a zero to five reading, then one digit, a period, and then another digit. Because this timer might have a reading in the minutes and also a reading sub minute with the seconds and the tenth of a second. So I would need to create this sort of format to be able to read this timer. This is how you would set up your scoreboard in ScoreSight. The next thing to do would be to go to your streaming software and hook it up to your broadcast. Thank you.